love it or leave it. And we're back. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage America's evil ex girlfriend. It's Melora Hardin. <laughs> Come on out. Thank you for being here. Please wel Thank welcome, you. welcome. Hi, hi, Thank hi. you. Hi. Okay, where do you want me? Here? Right there is great. Right here is great. Okay, look at your beautiful yellow tennis shoes. Now, I have green tennis shoes in the back. I probably should have worn them if I'd known you were wearing yellow or orange. Those are orange. Those aren't yellow. I think it's more of like a mustard. Those are definitely orange. Okay, yeah. I don't know about I'm No, learned, we're both I, my, colorblind, obviously. Remember my Bob, <laughs> remember my Bob Ross. <laughs> Did you watch Bob Ross? No. Oh. <laughs> Who's Bob Ross? Bob Ross was the painter. Oh, yes, uh, yes, of course. Well, yeah. I was raised in the 70s, so we all, anyone raised in the 70s saw Bob Ross. I really liked him. It was very soothing. He was very soothing. I would also watch Martha Stewart as a, as a little kid. Mm. And then when she went to jail, it ruined it for me. Yeah. Because she was perfect why. till then. And she then was. Less so. She's not, though, I don't think, in real life. No, I know, but I didn't know that at the time. No. Well, it, was a, it was a fantasy, although I turned it off when there were animal segments. You believe the TV. I do believe the TV. Yeah. It's the only thing we can trust. I agree. Speaking of... <laughs> speaking of television, you were Michael Scott's extremely problematic former lover in The Office. Was I? I believe. Uh, is it strange knowing that America relaxes to watching you be... To, to watching you torture him? No. It doesn't? You don't... It's not. It's fabulous. You like it? Sure. How oh, cool. <laughs> what do you what's your comfort watch? Um, right now I'm watching The Bear. Oh, The Bear. Yeah, I've only seen two episodes. But I think it's great. Yeah. It's really good. Just because my two daughters think it's amazing and they think Jeremy Allen White is hot. Oh. Do people find him handsome? I didn't think about it. I know, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his Calvin Klein ad? Yes, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, who was your favorite office cast member to work with? Mm. Phyllis? I mean, obvi well, obviously Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because I did everything with him. Um, yeah, he, he was great. Um, Rain is amazing. Um, I did very little with Rain, but I do love him. Um, I, God, I mean, they're, I mean, really, they're all great. They're all great to 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 do to do anything with on on camera. They're they're fabulous, really an incredible cast. But yes, Phyllis, you know, do you know Phyllis's story? Has she been on the show? No. Phyllis has a great. Why have we story. booked Phyllis? Yeah, you need to book Phyllis. <laughs> okay, Phyllis has a great on. story. Phyllis was the casting associate with Allison Jones, who cast The Office, and uh, Greg Daniels was like why don't you play Phyllis? She was just reading opposite actors and she was so good at it that literally that was it. She's, she's been a casting, she's never was an actor, never an actor before, before The Office. Wow. So she's like real. She's like a That's real cool. person. I'm just an actor. She's like a real person. <laughs> she's a real person. You're, just, you're an actor. I'm just an actor. You're an actor. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought, I'm learning. Okay, so now... <laughs> You've got an IMDb page so long. I mean, you've been you've been in so many things. All yeah. right, you've been in so many things. <laughs> Do you know how many things you've been in? I, I don't know exactly how many, but I did. I did start acting professionally five decades ago. That which is wild. I saw I'm not that. joking. No, That's it's real. It That's was a like, real you're number. Gonna, like it was like it was literally in the 1970s. You yeah. st the late seventies. You started acting. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, we started the, getting. Uh, you were. Yeah. Was the er well? Was it the late? I don't know. I was six years old, and I was born in nineteen sixty-seven. So what is that? I can't do math. Yeah, it's the eight, sixty-nine, seventy, seventy-one, seventy-two, seventy-three. Nineteen seventy-three was my first job. So that's a long time ago. Which is, which is why I know Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> Probably saw him at some of those fancy parties. <laughs> No, I wasn't going to fancy parties at six. I was going to nice birthday parties, though. Nice. <laughs> Neighborhood kids. Uh, so you were, you were a child actor? Yes, I was. How'd that go? <laughs> Cal Mitchell was a child actor. Was he? Yeah. I know. I heard you say that, actually. It was very hard to hear anything because you guys are a great audience and laughing and everything. And, was it the kind of thing that you had the, a desire to a perform? When was did it? he start? How old was he? Young. <laughs> was... Was it the kind of thing where you had this like 
unstoppable desire to perform or did your parents want a boat? Yeah. No, both my parents are actors. Oh. And I tugged on their sleeve because their commercial agent were like, was because see, back in the 70s, people, before the internet, before cell phones, you had to actually take your, 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 your resume and your, your headshot, which was like a pile this big, to your agents. And you had to plop it on their desk, your new headshots. And, and I went with my parents when they, when they did that with their commercial agent. And the commercial agent turned to me and went, wow, you're cute. Don't you want to do what mom and dad does? And I went, I can do what mom and dad does. I was like, yes, definitely I do. And then I bugged them and bugged them and bugged them. And they were like, oh my God, all right, we'll let her go on 10 auditions. If she doesn't get anything, we'll ease her out of it. And I got the first thing I went on. Wow. So that was that. That's cool. Yeah. I'm just weird. I'm just the bumper sticker born to perform or something. Yeah. I think so. Just it, it was in But you. my parents are amazing. So, you know, I think really if you're a child actor and you have shitty parents, it's a terrible experience. If you have great parents, it's a great experience. And my parents were fucking amazing. So I would say probably that's just childhood, right? <laughs> You just very you know good. What I'm saying? Very good. When you very think good. About it. Yes. Let's give him applause for that. that was a very good comeback. Yes. Now that, that was good. Uh, I like that one. And so, and on that note, it's time for a beloved or leave a beloved or leave it beloved love it or leave it segment. We call. Was I in this? Here's right. how it works. Oh, I like that. Picture. You and I will alternate asking audience members if okay. you're in a particular project. Oh. Some of our prompts are true. Some of our prompts are false. Okay. All of our prompts are amazing because they involve you. <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, I think so. I don't really know how to play, but I'll do my best. And are you in the audience ready? <laughs> Raise your hand and, and Brian will come and ask you a question. Do you oh and we do you have you have you have do you do you have cards? No one gave me anything. <laughs> We're, the cards are flying in. Malcolm, wait. Something's happening. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm this waiting. A, this podcast. Yes requires a shocking amount of production <laughs> you know it's not we're not we're not just on a cat oh i just want to see if they'll put them in my no oh hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> we did it all right oh, that was good you want to kick us off okay Who's questions out there? from Melora to read it says hi what's your name pam, pam. melora has a pam. question for you hi pam hi I played magazine editor Jacqueline Carlisle on The Bold Type, true or false? I'm hearing a woo, so yes, true. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, let's go to somebody else. <laughs> Pam, let's go to, oh, okay. Hi, all right. Melora played Maureen in the adequately rated 2008 <laughs> Catherine Heigl rom-com, 27 Dresses. True? Correct. <laughs> 27 oh, Dresses? Yes. <laughs> um, that was the heyday of a movie where People really had three jobs, uh, baker, magazine editor, or spy. <laughs> that's right. You're right. That was, that's history. Yeah, that was good. And you know, that the, here's a little tidbit about that, which is that um, James Marsden played opposite Catherine Heigl in that, and um, he's really cute. Very handsome. <laughs> um, anyway, he's also just a really nice person, really down to earth, really liked him a lot. And um, and the the director, Anne, like looked at me when I walked on set and looked at him and we were just enjoying each other so much because he's really nice and down to earth. And <laughs> I'm really nice and down to earth. So <laughs> we had a good time. And um, and she could basically looked at me and looked at him and she was like. Can we like do something? Can we like. Make her hair look worse or. Can we like do something with her makeup? Because I'm worried that it's gonna look like you two are, are, are you know, like chemistry. attract too much chemistry. Yeah, we you we, had too much. We had too much thing. chemistry. We in liked Hollywood, each other. that can be a huge problem. It's a problem. You had too much. You were just radiating yeah. ca charisma personally. Yeah, and tension interpersonally. We with just James liked each other like really like in real life. We just thought we were nice people. So they were like, they're like, hey, can we uh, yeah. fly in some dowdiness? Can we? Right. Yeah. Can we like take take we, her down a notch? Yeah. Which I've can heard. We get a, I've heard that a lot in my career, by yeah. the way. Like you have. Can you just would... take it down a notch? Yeah. I've heard hey, that a lot. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay. I portrayed Monk's beloved late wife Trudy Monk on Monk. <laughs> True. True. And oh boy, that's a lot of monks. <laughs> I don't know. I saw that. I didn't know what it meant either. I don't know what that means. I think it's just Trudy Monk on Rife with Trudy. 
played Monk's beloved Lei Wai Bon Trudy, Monk on Monk. That monk was on what, Monk. That's what, that's what that was about. So yeah. that's, he was a detective. Yeah, he was. You mm. see? Yeah. It's back to your, what you said before. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was what I'm right. Uh, who's up next? I can't see. All right, can we bring the lights up actually? That would be. Then oh, that, that would my be bad. great. Maybe not. I can't see anything. Hi, okay. <laughs> She played. She appeared on Law and Order SVU oh, as a feminist lawyer turned cult leader. Ooh, I'm gonna say true. No, oh, no. Man. How did you dodge? How did you dodge SVU? It seems like it should have gotten on that IMBD somehow. You, you would know? think so. Yeah. yeah. How'd you miss it? I don't know. You should have been like some kind of a I murderer. Know. Or I something. know. I know. Huh? Or maybe somebody wiping down a, yeah. a countertop, oh, and then yeah. it turns out, oh, it's in the back. Mm, the badness. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have played women that look like one thing, but they're really a bad person. Well, the you were on a CSI once. I was. But not on SVU. Isn't that one of the questions? No. No. Okay. It's a, that was a, a little fun fact after the one I just asked. Okay. And now we had the fun, and now it's your up. I portrayed Principal Jane Masterson in the underrated Jennifer Garner film, 13 Going on 30. Definitely underrated and true. Wow, you know, you're almost, you're right and you're wrong. You're right and you're wrong. You're right and you're wrong because I did play Jane Masterson, but that was not in Jennifer Garner's uh, 13 Going on 30. That was the underrated Matthew Perry, Zac Efron vehicle, 17 again. I'm not sure that was underrated. I think people liked that movie. I think people loved it at the time. And yet still, yeah. I like the genre of, of Jersey, remember that George Burns movie? No. Uh, 18 again? I love what? a movie where an old person gets to be in a young body for a while and they have a good time. And they always wish they would to go back, but I don't think they would. Did he do 18 again? He, he did. did. And we did 17 again. Yeah. Okay. I came up with that title. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> and it was really good. No, I'm actually not kidding. Huh? I came up with 17 again. You did. Because it was called. It was called, uh, maybe he gets young, maybe no, not. No, it was called like, it was called like, like, uh, what was it called? Oh. Oopsie doopsie wish mistake. Yeah. <laughs> No, Is that it? it I think that's that. what it was called. But anyway, whatever it was called. You said, I want to call it 17 again. Uh, I mean. This is going to drive me insane. Yeah. This is going to drive me a little insane. So well, if, you if think we of it, come back it to out. it later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'll do. Melora voiced Janet the Lioness in the 2011 Kevin James animal comedy Zookeeper. No one's raising their hand. <laughs> so I'm going to say true. No, it was Damn false. It. it was share. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I really want to do, I really, really want to do an animated voice. Well, sure. You sit in the booth for an hour and you got to pay a bunch of money. Exactly. And I'm, and I'm also a singer. Like, I want to sing. You can I want to do one of the little animal voices. And do, oh, my God. Yeah, what the hell? Why won't they? Well, I don't know. Why won't they cast me in that? I don't know. It's fucking town. This fucking town. Will you tell somebody? Hollywood, you know. Will you make someone do that? I would love to. I I'll call. I mean, they're not. Really? You know, I, I'll call good. Hollywood. It's just not good. I'll bring I'll bring it up at the next cabal meeting. Would you? Thank you. That would be awesome. <laughs> Fellow Jews, there's been another request. I have an uncredited voice role in the video game Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and why was it uncredited? I sing. Well, I sing in it. I don't know why it's not. Why didn't you get the credit? It should be credited. There it is. There's the photo. I'm singing in it. That's my, yeah. Oh, that, but wait. Oh, you should see my cartoon, though. I'm a really pretty, like, cartoon character in this video game. She's, like, really hot. That's cool. And I sing a song. I sing a whole, like, it's a very sexy, very fun song. It was fun. I had a good time. That was my, that was my, that was my friend who, who did that. Austin Wintry, he, he, he did all the music for it. And he had, he had been a fan because I sang two songs in The Rocketeer, which are on, which are on the, the soundtrack. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm ruining one of these questions. Um, but, uh, you but, can't ruin this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, good. It's already ruined. Yeah, it's fine. It's just ruined. What's going to happen? Yeah, exactly. What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. They can't send me to podcast jail again. <laughs> Double Jeopardy. <laughs>
Yeah, so, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so that was good. You want to do one more? I played Hillary, Monica's black light loving co-worker on Friends in the episode, The One with Ross's Teeth. Betsy? True. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but I did, I did do an episode of Friends. I played <gasps> Celia in the dirty talking insect scientist who gets attacked by Marcel the monkey in the one with the stoned guy. That's the episode. It was wow. called The One with the Stoned Guy. And 40 million people watched and that. that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was with David Schwimmer, who is, has been a friend of mine since I was 17. So that was just funny for us. That's cool. <laughs> and now you're in, you're in, you're in a, a Peacock. Is it a movie? It's a movie. Mr. Monk's Last Case. Yeah, it's a movie. Monk, mm -hmm. you're back. After 15 years of 15 being years. off the air, they did a movie. It's called Monk's Last Case. But it's getting so many accolades, I think it's not going to be his last case. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? It's they keep knocking they on Monk's door and saying, hey, yeah. freak, help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And he does. He does. In his and you're, and you're a ghost in it. I've always been a ghost and I always will. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That must because then you can just they can just it, they can just shoot you conveniently. That's right. Because you're just kind of wherever you need to but be. But see, I'm not. That's not the kind of ghost I am. Oh. Like you can't you can't kill me. You don't want to kill me. You know. I mean, I did get to play. I did get to play a woman, an actress impersonating Trudy Monk at the very end of the series in the last season of the series. And that was super fun. And I actually got, like, I wore these green contacts so that my eyes were a different color. So I was alive in one episode. That's cool. Yeah. Which was, which was alive, was living. It was good. It felt real and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, what's my motivation? Being alive. Yeah. Just, just being alive and having green eyes. So there and, was like that. And you went method with it. That fed me. You've been method with it ever since. You've been playing yeah. an alive person ever since. I have. And you have a movie, Golden Vanity. I do. And that is a, that's a crazy little weird little movie that no one can see quite yet. But oh. I really hope you can because that's it's... The, that's the most important thing about it. Yeah. Is making I mean, sure people see it. Yeah. No, it really is important. Uh, we've been taking it to film festivals. It's been winning everything. Thank you very much. It's the first one woman movie ever, as far as we know. There's some one man movies, but this is the first one woman movie um, ever made. Really? As far as we know. That's cool. Unless somebody wants to dispute that. Um, but as far as I know, and as far as the filmmakers know, in any case, it's, it's really, really, really cool. It's about a fictitious movie star, a la kind of Judy Garland, Elizabeth Taylor, uh, on her way down, who is, you know, coming from the, the Golden Movie Awards and uh, decides on a very dramatic night of her life to record her life story and finally set the record straight. So I hope you guys will look for it. 2024 is about selling the movie. 2023 was about getting it into festivals, which we did and we succeeded. And so I'm very happy about that. And 2024 is about selling the movie. So it'll be somewhere on some streamer because it's fucking great. Well, based on how you describe it, it sounds like gay drugs to me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is. No, it's an intense movie. It's funny. It's tragic. It's, it's cool. pretty great. Well, Laura, thank you so much for being here. That was so much fun. You're so welcome. This thank you blast. for having me. When we come back, when we come back, Zoin Scoob, we got ourselves a mystery.